Good Tuesday morning, guys. My name is Jerry Miller, and welcome to Real Talk, an insider's guide to real estate life and the pursuit of happiness. It's the first Tuesday in August here in 2021. Markets opening red, um, lukewarm on Wall Street right now. We will follow that for you. Um, a lot to cover on today's program, guys. Families returning slowly to Charlottesville. This is kind of the last hurrah of vacation. And the distinguished gentleman, Keith Smith, who you'll see in a matter of moments, Judah Wickhauer is our director. We've been crystal balling the impact of families returning, school starting, and what the impact it will have on markets. Judah, let's start with the studio camera and then welcome the star of the program, Keith Smith, to the program. I'm dapping you up, dog. Good dapping, to see you, homie. Dapping me up. I'm dapping you up, baby. Uh, um, how are you? So I need to know what that means. It's giving you props. Oh, there you go, buddy. I always give you props. I'm, learn I'm learning all this new new vibes. Yeah, man. I, I uh, You know, it, it, it's interesting. We talked about this yesterday, but the market, uh, the real estate market, that is, um, not the one that you're looking at over there that's all red. Yeah. But the real the real estate market, um, you know, it, it's kind of making a, an adjustment. And everything that you read, if you Google and you go through all this kind of great stuff, the, the real estate market is starting to get a little bit balanced. Um, it's And it's, um, I'm not saying that it's, we talked about this yesterday, it's not that it is absolutely insane. It's just maybe just insane or yeah, just. It's just, stabilizing. It's stabilizing. Yeah, that's Slightly the word. stabilizing. Well, it, it is, but you know, the bottom line is just a lack of inventory, and we've been talking about this. And there's no magic wand to fix it. You know, the the, the thing is, is we know what, in my opinion, we know what's causing it. Uh, it's purely takes too long to generate new inventory to go ahead and do all this stuff. So, uh, you know, it's just um, it's just interesting. But we started before we went live because I didn't get a chance to watch the show yesterday, your noon show, is to talk a little bit about this article that the New York Times put out. Um, so give me a little feedback. How was, how was it yesterday? So the show was fantastic. Um, it was the lead of the program. The New York Times has featured Charlottesville three times in the last 60 days in its print and digital publication. Um, it featured Charlottesville about the statues. Mm -hmm. It featured Charlottesville about upzoning. Yeah. That was the most recent one, Sunday edition. Yep. And it also featured Charlottesville as the premier place to vacation on the eastern seaboard because of the vaccination rates in Almoral County in the city of Charlottesville. We're doing a hell of a job. So it's interesting you should bring that last one up. <clears throat> I was with a client from Arizona. I mentioned it yesterday. Uh, out. A lead from the show, right? A lead from the show, but also part of this third... Dab it up, dog. Thank you, buddy. Dab it up. <laughs> this third, um, yeah, I love you too. I just have no idea what that means, but we'll Google it later. <laughs> uh, someone's asking why you're perspiring on the feed right why now. Why am I yeah. perspiring? <laughs> Did we want to touch on that? Just how about this? Um, some food didn't set well. You like that? Yona and I went out to eat. Yeah, food's not sitting well That's in my... I'll leave it. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. So, yes. <laughs> Thank you for asking, Grace. <laughs> Grace, thank you. Thank Grayson, you. Grayson. Grayson. I'm, I'm not feeling well. Thank you, Grayson, for that. It was, uh, and then I also, I walked today from the office yeah. over here, so. I guess we could have just blamed it on that. Yeah, that would have been smart. That would have been smart, yeah. <laughs> that would have been he smart. hooked it from X Park to, I, to well, Market Well, I, I hooked it to X Park to here, but something and he's did, always dressed well. It's also, well, I got, I got, um. I got uh, I got whistled out on the way over today. Whoa! Yeah, made my day. Who whistled at you? A young lady whistled okay. at me. Who knew that stuff is still alive? Were, were they uh, whistling at you because what you were looking at? Were they trying to keep you from uh, heading into the street and onto oncoming traffic and getting whacked by a vehicle? I would go with the first one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been the second one. <laughs> But I'm going to keep it as the first. You know, I got I got a little whistle oh, this I'm, morning. I'm very, you're looking sharp. I got, I got a whistle. It's freshly manicured, fresh haircut, uh, always looks and good. And even when I'm sweating, there I'm, you go. Still, I'm still doing that. So I, I was interested to go back to the... Arizona. Thank the you. Vaccines. Thank you. Thank you for keeping me on track. So, so they, part of the reason why this particular individual, other than family, because she has family here, is because of that article. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, the... the you know, she's of, uh, of, of an age of my age, kind of and up, and uh, is just really concerned about infection rates. And sure. We all is, are. This is why, absolutely. This is why it's done. And, and to pivot a little bit, um, back to this zoning article on that, I'm curious, was the, was the feed, you know, because if you read it a certain way, it kind of makes Charlottesville look, look a little 
not to say in the best light. That's I, I that's how totally I read. Agree. That's how I read it. Yeah. And I was just curious because the other two topics we're talking about yeah. in New York Times are very positive, right? Well, this is this. Yes, removal of statues and and high vaccination rates. I would say those were positive. Those are very positive. Very positive. Well said. This, I'm not really sure. It makes Charlottesville, the New York Times, in the Sunday edition this past Sunday, we're talking about upzoning, painted Charlottesville, or the motif of the article was almost Charlottesville is hypocritical. That we can be progressive in so many ways where it comes from the removal of statues, sure. social justice, sure. trying to recover from 812. Sure. Black Lives Matter. Sure. Um, we're a progressive city. Very much so. But when it's come to the upzoning, according to the New York Times in this article, we're we the are opposite. a contradiction of ourselves yeah, yeah, because a lot so. of the community does not want it. Yeah. So, so Is that the, how you read it? Uh, that's how I read it, yeah, and I, you know, you and I literally have not had this conversation, and nor have I watched your show. So I was just really curious on how the local population. Well, Bill McChenzie, you're watching. What did you make of the New York what, Times article? What was the local folks taken into it? And and it and it and it seems to me, my interpretation of it, and this is my interpretation. Sure. This is this is a, you know what did I tell somebody? Here? I'm just a guy who plays a, 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 a host on an on, on a, a talk show. On a talk show. But your opinion matters. Thank you. People well, everybody, everybody's opinion matters first first and foremost. Um, it's interesting though. When you leave your opinion on the record like you have oh, for yeah. so long, yeah, well, two years plus of leaving your opinion on this record, yeah. and that proof of performance yeah. means your opinion matters quite a bit. Yeah. Well, or I'm not that smart. So. No, you're rarely wrong. Neil Williamson, hello. Yeah, hey, Neil. So, you know, I, and I would love Neil's opinion on, on this article. You know, to me, it looks like the nimbyism uh -huh. is very well-rooted. That's that's the interpretation I got out of it, and that that as you said, we're so forward thinking. I, progressive is is maybe a different word that, that I, I you know at least we're forward thinking. We're always forward thinking as a um, as a community, and that's the, when we say Charlottesville, we're talking about the whole region. Nelson County, for instance, is just a, you know knocking it out of the box, and Fulvana and Louise are in this forward thinking in different categories, but you know it's just. I'm not so sure I felt good after I read that article. What did you think, Neil Williamson? What did you think, Johnny Ornalis? What did you think, Jamie Turner? What did you think, Grayson? What did you think, Ray Cadell? What did you think, Bill McChenzie? The New York Times article from Sunday. On the flip side to that is, yeah. sometimes you don't like to hear. The... Maybe they're right. Yeah, that's about to say. Sometimes yeah. one does not like to hear the truth. That's what I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The truth stings. This truth, the truth hurts. I mean, how truly progressive can the municipality, the jurisdiction, the city of Charlottesville be? Yeah, we can be social justice, Black Lives Matter, the removal of statues, a $15 living wage, social justice and social equity. Yes, we can fight against the gentrification, the evolution of this municipality into a bastion of the white and the rich. But when it comes to upzoning and creating more density, maybe there is a NIMBY mentality that's still very rooted in the, in the city. Well, what do you think, Ray? It's not the city. That's Central Virginia. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you know but, why? It's because we're fearful of turning into Fredericksburg or Northern Virginia. But, but it's, it's nationwide, though. It's a nationwide thing. It, it's, it, you see this, see this everywhere. And I think Neil sh shared a great article about uh, Portland. Portland, 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 Thank Portland, you, Portland Neil. Oregon. Thank you, Neil, for sharing that information. Um, yeah, so uh, it, it's, man, you know, I, I, I think you and I can talk for 40 hours, hundreds of hours, which we have. And I just don't know if we can come with come to an uh, an understanding or a solution to that. I know this much. This is a real estate show. Yeah, well, we got questions coming for you. And I have clients. Even though we just talked, the market is changing. Inventory is coming up. You know, but I have clients from all different price points, from two hundred thousand to something with the one in front of it, not a hundred thousand, right? We can't find what they want. Sure. So why is that? I mean, the Neil Williamson has taught us um, more housing everywhere for everyone. 
You've taught me for 12, 13 years or so. We've not kept up with millennial and younger buyer demand by creating new construction. You've also taught me yeah. that there's tremendous red tape in these municipalities, city and Almaro County, that make it difficult for the developers to come to market. I mean, you've t I've looked, Keith. But but I'm pushing so much. But I'm but I'm pushing it you back. You know that, right? I know. Yeah. Thank you. I'm pushing it back into you, though. Okay, please. Be because. My ride, part of the reason I'm sweating is I also ride, rode an hour and a half this morning. Nice. Um, the, uh, uh, and at my age, it takes a little bit longer to get the things. You're still doing it, dude. Yeah, I am trying yeah. anyway. Uh, I want to be young and good looking like you. <laughs> the, I didn't say smart, you know. Dan, a mustache Dan Pettit says, Keith, that was Yona whistling at you. <laughs> that. That's right, Dan. Good, good answer. That's right, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, we appreciate you watching the show. Yeah, Dan, Dan's Dan's yeah, good people. Dan, he, you're good people. Th good people. He's uh, you know, there's nothing like uh, uh, a little bust, but bust chops busting in it. Yeah, we like zingers. Like yeah. zingers, we do them all day long. But to push it back to you, sure. um, and uh, I'm going to pivot a second. Please. So my you lost your train of thought. Didn't no, you? no, I didn't. Okay. I, okay. I want to set this up a little bit. So the. The client I showed around for a while, for whatever reason, we hit off really, really well. Okay. Um, well, you're likable. And well, and normally I usually ask after you know so, 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 you know what this person's profession is or what did they retire from, and I kind of never did that in this conversation. And we're wrapping the, the day up. She's heading back to Arizona. She goes, you know, you never bothered to ask me what I did for a living, and I went. You know, I never thought about that. We just hit it off so well. It just that question never popped in my head. She goes, "Well, I'm a clinical psychologist," and I went, "Oh, <laughs> so I just spent." <laughs> so she psychoanalyzed you for spent, an entire day. I, no, 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 four days. And, and, and Yona was not there because she was in Connecticut. Right? Yeah, I spent four days. <laughs> because Yona keeps you a little more on your P's and Q's. Oh, of course she does. Like, yeah. Somebody else does for you. Yo, oh, no doubt. Uh, and then you get you and I together like this, and then I it's just a little loose. <laughs> yeah. I literally spent, oh, God, four, eight, uh, roughly 12 hours one-on-one -on -one with a clinical psychologist. <laughs> So, of course, I said, well, did I pass? And she goes, eh. <laughs> <laughs> but she wanted to come here because of vaccination rates. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, no, it was one of the reasons. There's, mul life. there's multiple reasons, quality of life, family here. Um, she wants to, you know, um, we, we should bring Ali on one of these days. Okay. Um, Ali is this uh, um, adult learning from that UVA does. Okay. Uh, but that's part of what she wants to do. She wants to go and, and be part of the adult learning program, constantly keeping her brain brain moving but to, to go around a little bit back to this conversation we're having about up zoning and, and nimbies and all this stuff back to what you said you know i've been doing this for a long time and it's just even though we had a huge win yeah a couple huge wins it it, it beats you up man well look i'm gonna play it for the sake of a talk show neil williamson bill mcchenzie it beats you Goodell, up johnny ornalis um mustache dan pettit we, we love you guys. Thank you for watching the program. For the sake of a talk show, I'm going to make this statement strictly for the sake of a talk show. All right. The NIMBY mentality is not only rooted in concerns or worries of impact on quality of life. Oh, I know. But what you're the gonna NIMBY go. mentality is very much rooted in protecting the value of the most prized investment in a family or individual's portfolio. If you can <clears throat> limit the housing stock, in a city or a county, then the home you own, if you're fortunate to own one, is likely to increase in value at a faster rate. So Supply I, and demand. I would, I would guarantee for, you. For a talk show, guys, for a talk show. Got it. I would, I would bet you any amount of money Neil's head's about ready to explode. Well, no, I know. And I'm because, saying this. I don't agree with this thing. Oh, I'm doing it. it for the sake got of a got talk it, show. Got I got agree. Got Everyone got should have a piece of the American yeah. pie. But a host on a talk show has to simulate conversation. Sure, sure, totally. Um, the, the, the reality is it's the opposite. Okay, explain that. The reality, when you a lot can just, of folks don't realize this. But you can Google it, though. Yeah. Right? And, you, you know, anybody can Google it, and you can find out that, that m more actually increases the value of, of your property, not, not less. Let's just think about it um, from a practical perspective. 
right? So we are, we are appraisals, right? Just from an appraisal. So if there's more product out there, it kind of mathematically increases the value of everybody across the board. We had a conversation yesterday about, about gated communities, right? Gated communities are increasing. There's a lot of uh, 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 increasing in, in folks moving into them. There's a lot of reasons why for that. Um, everything from this is where the lots are, Right from so oh, you're smiling. Well, their, their comments are coming in. People yeah, yeah, enjoy yeah. what they're hearing. So, so uh, I, yeah. So I, I just I, I I didn't. I'm not prepared to quote chapter and verse on that, but I'm sure if Neil, with his fast fingers, can probably put something in the in the chat that proves this thing. But it it does increase. He asked. There you go. Yeah. It it actually does. It increases um, everybody's value. It doesn't decrease everybody's value. If we don't. You know, look. Here's uh, a perfect example. Let, 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 of that. Me, let me get okay, this thought out for a second. So, so. Sorry. I get no, no. I, yeah. <laughs> ADD, ADD, <laughs> ADD. Um, what happens to your business if it doesn't grow? I mean, if your business doesn't grow, I, you have to grow every year. What happens to your checking account if it doesn't yeah, grow? Yeah, you have to grow every year. Yeah. So, so this is not really that different. So, if the market overall grows, now, 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 doing it smartly doing it right if you grow your business or you grow your your home finances or whatever you do it smartly you just don't go willy-nilly going out without a plan or anything like that so so it has to be done smartly go ahead a perfect example i hope that made sense that made sense okay a perfect example that's the antithesis or opposite of the statement i made that was strictly to stimulate conversation got it i believe everyone should have the opportunity of home ownership and for us to make that happen we're going to have to create more housing stock in central virginia no question about it now i'm going to stipulate very quickly we must consider infrastructure sure. when we're creating additional housing stock sure infrastructure and housing stock have to go together when being considered but a perfect example of additional housing stock driving values for existing homeowners is in the neighborhood i live in stanley martin which we talked yesterday on the monday market monitor well done the monday market monitor literally liter literally presented I, by uh, yes reality partners no. that's reality partner okay um i literally presented by monday market monitor <laughs> by yes reality partners the, the, and who else, and who else? Uh, <laughs> okay 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 <laughs> The what are we doing here? Do we know what we're doing? No, I, the Monday Market <laughs> Monitor is presented by Yes Realty Partners and Closure Title and Settlement Company. Yeah, yeah, Yes Realty Partners. Yeah, okay, okay. So we're, <laughs> we're on the Tuesday show, Jerry, not right. the Monday right, show. Right, right, okay, okay, understood. All right, so this is what I'm going to throw to you. Got it. Got, got it. it. Okay, now I got we it. We got it. We're on okay. the same page? Now we're on the same page. This is the first show, Keith. I'm trying to cross-pollinate. Um, all right, so this is what I want to throw to you, my friend. Cross-pollinate. Okay. That's good synergy, cross yeah, 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 yeah. Is Stanley Martin in the neighborhood that I yeah, live in, sure. East Town in Keswick? We love Stanley Martin. They're building new construction. They're creating additional housing stock. Guess what they don't have left. And that additional housing stock is priced high because it's new construction. It's priced fairly for the market, sure. but it's priced from an average standpoint in the neighborhood a little higher than the average. And it's driving up sure. the values for all the sure. other existing So that's going to plateau. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. But that's an example, though. That's that's an example of yeah. more housing increasing. Also, oh, oh, so yeah. exactly right. I think I think just to play devil's advocate to okay. that, the 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 pushback is if I build some if I'm building something at a dollar, right? I own something at a dollar, uh -huh. and you build something at fifty cents. That draws the dollar down, and it does not draw the dollar down. It actually draws the fifty cent up. And it actually helps you go go up. And and I'm I don't know which link Neil put in there, but I suspect that's the synopsis of the of the conversation. Uh, Stephanie Rhodes, hello. Hey Stephanie, we how love you doing? You, Stephanie. We love Stephanie. Um, on Real Talk, and we love Interstate Service Company. We do very much. So Interstate Service Company, a home's best friend. friend. Look a at home's that. Home's best friend. There you go. That's a fantastic <laughs> tagline, isn't it? It a sucks. It's the friend. worst one ever. No, that's not what you're supposed to say about the presenting sponsors, <laughs> even if it's tongue in cheek and a joke. A home's I'm just best trying to give you a hard time. Is Interstate uh, Service Company a perfect solution they, they for all know, the realtors? They know the we love them. Yeah, we know they I love mean, them. I mean, I very much love the family and yeah, the business. Good people. Um, Damn good people. So let's get to comments. Well, like, before we do that, okay. I would. I want, I want to get back into this infrastructure conversation okay. you and I had mm -hmm. that with, and I don't know if I did a good job explaining it yesterday on the traffic 
scenario versus the missing middle, because that's, that's the terminology I prefer to use instead of upzoning, but the upzoning in the missing middle. In the conversation, I sat down and had a cup of coffee with a very respected traffic engineer on one side and the chief, the head uh, engineer for VDOT on the other, talking about a, a particular project. And the way they explained it to me, and I'll see if I can do a better job at it, the way they explained it to me was is that this 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 buyer, mm -hmm. right, this two hundred thousand dollar buyer, this one fifty, this two fifty, two twenty five, let's call that the affordable housing buyer price point, is going to Buckingham. You can't even go to Lake Monticello right now. Lake Monticello's in the two eighties creeping up to the three hundred. So this is getting pushed further, further out, and these fo folks are driving into town from Buckingham, from the other ends of Louise, or so forth and so on, about an hour. Now, if you take something in Belmont, this is the way they explained it to me, and it made sense to me. If you take something in Belmont and you put a, turn it into a duplex or a triplex or a quad or whatever it is, just from a traffic perspective, that same traffic is on the roads. You're not increasing population. Now, if we, had, if we have a lot of increase, but that was their rationale. So that driver, instead of driving one hour in, is maybe only driving whatever, but nine, something around 60% of the people that live like in UVA and go from Belmont and all this stuff, they would project, would end up taking mass tra transit, Matthew Gilligan's rad electric bike, which I sent them some cool info, I saw that. info this, this yeah. morning. I, I, I love the heck out of that company. Um, and or they walk, like I did, from Studio X to here. Well, I mean, okay. I, but that was his explanation, and it made sense to me. I understand what you're saying, but if you, okay, let's... So let's I don't think be, it increases, what it will do, though, is maybe increase some of the traffic on the side streets, and that may be a true factor. And it, okay, let's... But on the arteries, it doesn't change let's the Let's be volume. realistic. Okay. Okay, be very realistic here. Okay. If you increase density in the city of Charlottesville that's landlocked, it's 10.2 square miles. Got we it. have nowhere to go but up yeah, got it. or up zone by creating more housing stock. Sure. You're going to have more traffic. If you bring more people I'm, to the I'm municipality, not sure, you know. you're going to have even, you're going to have slightly more traffic. Yeah, I, I, From an infrastructure standpoint, it's going to crowd schools if additional schools are not built. This is just that, that's a different conversation. Straightforward, common sense stuff here. That's a com different conversation. I was focusing purely on traffic. Yeah. I'd have to lean on the traffic engineers, but you okay. know, it's it's from if if you add more people to a city, it's going to add more congestion with public transportation. It's going to put more pressure on public transportation. Sure, that I agree. It's going to make CAT have to be more legitimized and reliable well, it needs to get better. and robust. It needs to get better. Yeah. I mean, we got a public transportation, and, and and I'm not we're not knocking anyone. But CAT has seen much better days. Charlottesville Mall Transit. Yeah, but but I mean, it's close to being bankrupt. But we're CAT. But we're fifty thousand people, right? You don't the think we don't have the density to do it? You don't have to. That's the other flip side to that. You don't. That's have, a fair point. You don't have the density to it. You don't have the volume of folks to do this. So you're trying to run a a uh, world. We are a world-class city, according to what the, what the city council says, but run a world-class city, but you just don't have the, the, the revenue to do it. Now, maybe our taxes can go up, and you know, maybe that's the way to do it. I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, but <clears throat> somebody's trying to put a Seattle type of mass transit system into a 50-person, 50 50,000-person 50, city. Now, we're more than that. We're 300,000. But just think about that. There's 250 of the 50,000 live outside the, the core of the city. They're driving in anyway. And that's the point of this engineer. They're all coming in anyway. So if you were just to say nobody from, well, I think it was the city of Paris actually just did this. If you did not have a certain um, uh, a permit on your vehicle, you couldn't drive into certain centers of the of the That's city, an interesting concept. yeah. You have to. Um, it's Paris and London is actually doing that. That's a smart concept. Actually. Yeah. So what you'll do is you have you to, throttle traffic. Correct. So you would have to just take. Um, That's actually a clever concept. Yeah. Well, they they they've been doing that for a couple of years in certain cities. I think Barcelona started it first. I may have some. I know for sure Paris is doing it. Huh. Um, maybe Barcelona was first. But th what they'll do is they make you park. If you're going to drive in, you have you have to take mass transit to get into the core the core of the of the city or you walk or you take a they they open up you know special bike lanes and they they're literally shutting down 
um, you know, one they'll, if you have a two-way lane, one way is for bikes, one way is for cars, that kind of thing. So there's going to be a lot of that outside of the box thinking that you're going to have to do. But we're only 50,000 people. Well, let's throw this here. Multiple people. Bill McChenzie, I'm going to get to your comments now. Neil Williamson, I'm going to get to your comments now. I got comments coming in, text messaging. Did I just get Twitter. fired? Did I get fired from somebody? No, no. Um, multiple people, Neil Williamson, can you give us this exact, exact answer? When, if the upzoning is approved by city council, we know elections matter, the election in November, two seats are open, you got to think Wade and Walker are the front runners there, Pinkston perhaps certainly in the, in the mix, It'll you got to think Wade and Walker are front runners. Close. After the election in November, when will this upzoning be determined, decided, and become a reality? If it does, can you give us a ballpark, Neil? So we're we're, we're I, this is, we are picking up what we talked about yesterday, yeah. right? So uh, when will actual product go in the ground? When will people actually be able to start to knock down an R one single family and build a do try or quad? Well, if you read that article that Neil sent. It actually is, which I can tell you from a build-a-developer perspective, it's easier to add on than it is to tear something down and go, go on. If you took a look, because that was the ROI article they did. They took a look at what the ROI was going was gonna to do. It was a pretty neat article. Um, hold it. No, I might be mixing up something that I read on, um, out, of, out of Seattle. Yeah. Different, different company, different, yeah. different I, article. I, I think, okay, so let, let's, get to, let's get to the comments. Neil, and if you can give us that answer, might be that the same. It might be the same one. Um, Bill McChenzie on the article. It was the one from Sightline, right? X Neil, I believe it's a Sightline Okay, uh, this is from article. Bill McChenzie. On the article, the mixed reviews from people of color were telling. Yes. One, pal one person felt her, vo her voice did not count. Yes. Most folks felt it would further gentrification in the city of Charlottesville. Personally... I feel it will degrade neighborhoods. Bill McChenzie continues, I don't want this theft of property rights in anyone's backyard. And I have been hearing counselors for years talk how Seattle does this, does this and Seattle does that. So that's from Bill McChenzie. Yeah. This is from Neil. The New York Times article correctly identified change is hard, yeah. but more inclusive housing policy efforts are making inroads. Hashtag more housing everywhere for everyone. Neil shares a link from the Free Enterprise Forum. We love the Free Enterprise Forum on the I Love Seville Network. And we love Neil Williamson and his affinity for, the Paul, for Paul's Deli in Williamsburg. I love that too. He says, if a project is meeting the community vetted comprehensive plan designated density, who should be responsible for funding the infrastructure, yep. the new home buyer or the community at large? Mm -hmm. you wanna... Yeah, you know, these are great questions. Bill's a great question, and, and that's uh, a comment anyway. Uh, you know, the, the reality of it is both of these things are wrapped around this education component. Right and getting folks in there. I, I, I've, I've seen this work. Okay, let's forget about the name of the city. I've been in cities where they've done this, and it was, in my opinion, it was done well. Uh, my 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 youngest daughter lives in the neighborhood that you know. If you were to pull Belmont out and drop it into the city that she lives out west, it looks exactly the same. Okay. Same time it was built, same everything that was built, and what what happens is you don't go down the street and have 15, 15 quads on one street, 15 quads on a, a lot of these houses you would drive out, you didn't realize from a street, from an aesthetic perspective, <clears throat> that there was an ADU in the back or there was a second unit in the back of the house. You never knew it that, it, that it was there because it kept the character. And part of that is also going to be about how they, you know, to go back to your question for Neil, I'm gonna step through that a little bit. <clears throat> A lot of it is the um, this comprehensive plan thing is very visionary, right? Then you have to get into the rules. Then you've got to get into the site. Excuse me, the rezoning component of it. Then you got to get into the to the subdivision portion of it. On hey, you can't have a mass that looks like this. You can't have a mass that looks like that. If one house on the left looks like this and one house on the right looks like that, you can't put something in the middle. There's all kinds of myriad of rules that you have to comply with, which minimizes the number of units that can be built 
drastic. So there's a ways to control that or encourage that. Maybe it's a better choice of words on that end of it. So the, the, the thinking of is, is you and I going to walk down and buy one set of street and turn them all into quads, if that's what Bill's thinking, and I'm sure it's not. Um, uh, yeah, well, I, let me answer this question. Will the upzoning changes... This is a really question, okay? Because there's a lot of layers to unpack with what I'm about to ask you. Will the upzoning changes expedite gentrification and evolve neighbors, neighborhoods that are historically African American into very different versions of themselves? The last affordable pockets of real estate in the city of Charlottesville, and they're quickly becoming unaffordable. They are unaffordable. 10th and Page, Prospect Orangedale, and Fifeville. So I'm going to flip this around with you. You think okay. it's going to stop? You're, you're saying regardless of the zoning changes, it's, why it, is it the it, gentrification it, happening it's anyway? It's going to happen anyway. Unless something happens. That's a good counterpoint. To, to prevent that. It's going to happen. So, so, so let's twist it around a little bit. Um, rezoning, right? Not to get too, I don't want to get too in the weeds on stuff, but let's talk about rezoning. Um, there's a parcel. You and I are going to do this. We're going to rezone it. We're following the comp plan. We're following yada, 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 yada. We fail. For whatever reason, NIMBY's come in to fail. We're just going to go in and do it by right. Yeah. Right? So it's going to it's gonna get built. Yeah. Gentrification is happening now. So, Bill, that's, that's a good one for you there, Bill. We want, I asked that because you mentioned gentrification there. So it's going to happen no matter what. So how do you, you know, if we come up with, and I'm, I'm just, this is just my personal opinion, right? This is, what did you say? For the sake of a talk for show. For the sake of a talk show. Talk show, right? <clears throat> so let's, let's wrap this rezoning conversation around this upzoning conversation and try to put them together a little bit. So what's the benefit from a person who lives in the neighborhood about rezoning? You have some influence on that. You may think you don't, but you actually do. Of course. You have some influence on that, right? There, there's uh, The developer has to meet certain requirements because the government, through this process of upzoning and rezoning, changing and, and subdivision ordinance changing, have created rules to go ahead and do this, right? And more strict rules. And then if you throw an SUP in there, a special use permit in there, then the elected body can put conditions on the person or entity that's doing it. I'm with you. So there's control there. There's some, there's ways to control the outcome of it. It's, you know, I, that may not, some people may not like that, but that's the reality of it. Versus none, I just go do what I want to do, right? And I take this land and I cut it up into a bunch of whatevers and sell them for whatever. Um, you know, it, there, there's no impact. You, you, have, you have no um, no involvement or participation in the process. Does that make any sense? That makes perfect sense. Um, let's get to comments. Sure. Bill McChenzie But, but says, I like Bill. Bill Bill's, Bill's contributing well, I mean, big time. Yeah, well, Thank and, you, Bill. And he's engaged, dude. This yeah, guy what is watching that? city council meetings. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. writing to council. He's yeah. engaged. Yeah, well, he he's, said, I could potentially... He's a way I, smarter guy than I am. I could, I could potentially be in a quad sandwich. Potentially. A quadplex sandwich. You could be. You could this be. would drive up my land value for a fixed income person this may drive me out of my home. Because of taxes. That's what he just said. Yeah. But I don't disagree with that. This will drive up my land value, and for someone on a fixed income, this may drive me out of my home. And Bill is doing exactly what Bill should be doing. Yeah. And Bill is engaging and participating, wife. and he's having his opinion heard, and he's reaching out to that, and that's what you have to do. And because of Bill engagement and others and and I want you know you know it's it's disheartening to sit here good. you like that huh yeah, that uh, good. I stayed up all night thinking good about job. that word I don't know what it means but I think I used it right <laughs> you used it very did well. I really there yeah. you go yay <laughs> Keith and I'm not even sweating anymore look at that I'm on a rhythm uh, the the you influence decisions people influence the process he getting said, Keith's exactly right get engaged due to taxes the yeah. city yeah. Yeah, yeah. changed my land values two yeah. years ago yeah. by grouping Melbourne Place with Foxbrook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, but so you're empathetic to his plight. I'm empathetic to his plight. Um, I mean, I, you know, uh, it, it's, you know, it's a chicken and egg thing, right? You know. It, it, how do you make an omelet? You're gonna to have to break a couple of eggs to make an omelet. So, but but what you what you have to do is be engaged. And Bill's being engaged. Get your opinion made and all that stuff. And he knows. I know Bill's a sharp guy. He knows if he gets his um, the rate may go up, but if his um, uh, tax assess is a little bit out of what he thinks is, you can contest that. Most people don't know that. Oh, yeah, you can contest it. And I, it's not that difficult to process. I do it every year, yeah. and I win every year. And, and also, there is um, tax relief for individuals on fixed income. That's exactly right. And the retirement portion of their lives, something also to consider, Bill. Neil Williamson gives a timeline of when the upzoning could happen. Good. This is extremely important for see, anybody see watching the show. Mine matches his. Okay, this is extremely important. The Seville Plans Together upzoning process the fabulous Neil Williamson, president of Free Enterprise Forum, one of the partners of Well Hung Vineyards, Neil Williamson. And a reg him and Sean, a regular occurrence on our show. A regular contributor to Real Talk. Good work. One of the stewards of Central Virginia, Neil Williamson. Neil Williamson, one of the key okay. members of Green Hill Golf Club. <laughs> I love you, Neil Read Williamson. All right, he says this. Gentlemen. Oh. I added the gentleman. Oh. Okay. I think he said dumbasses. Did he say dumbasses? No, he didn't say dumbasses. No, no, that'd be about right. He didn't say dumbasses. He says, my estimate is the zoning ordinance will be acted on prior to November 2023 elections. Oh. If delayed, it will be a huge campaign issue for those three council seats. I then responded on the feed. So, will this get done before Snook Lloyd, McGill Cena, and Payne Michael... Are, real, are up for re-election again. He says, potentially, he thinks right before, in the summer, before a November re-election. And then he says, and because of the way Charlottesville elects council, a new majority could be in place by January 2024. He's exactly right. Yeah. Well, I think he and I are going to have to take a bet on that. I don't think that's going to, I don't think. You think it's before. No, I do not think the rezoning changes will make it before the election cycle starts. Okay, so this is extremely important. What You got Keith Smith here and Neil Williamson, two people in the know. November of 2023. So you, you can't use... Go ahead. I'll let November you of 2023, three seats are up for re-election. Lloyd Snook, that dude's not going to run again. I do not think Lloyd Snook's going to run again. Cena McGill... If you're reading the tea leaves correctly, C. to McGill is not going to run again. Uh, okay. Just tea leaves, worn down. Got it. Michael Payne, he very well could run again. His primary source of income is being a Charlottesville city councilor, Michael Payne, no. and he's a young guy. So he I very well could run again. Those three seats are up for re-election. Keith Smith is saying that this decision will not be determined until after the November 2023 election. So whoever is voting to office in those three seats, they determine the majority in a five-person council and could determine the future of upzoning in a process that's been years in the hopper. So Think about that. That's crazy. Got it. So the reason, you know, I'm, and I hope I'm wrong. You right? hope it's done before. I because hope. Because of the institutional memory. I hope I am wrong. Well, I, and I, as a realtor, you see the potential in the upzoning, <laughs> and you know pain well, McGill yeah, I, and Snook are likely going to vote. Yeah, yes I'm, I'm taking my. Okay. Well, I once was told I can never take my real estate hat off, but for this case, I'm taking my. Is real that not a bad case on that? No, I think it was. I think it was yesterday. Oh, it was. That's right. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, Nikki said that. For the sake of a talk show. Yes. Here's the reality of it: if this is not voted on, approved, I'm talking about the zoning ordinance by this time next year. So the, the election crazy cycle is going to start for next, for 2023, November? I mean, some candidates have already announced. Well, that's in Almore County. Okay. I never understood Steve, why. You, <laughs> Steve Harvey has as well. Okay. I did, okay. Well, there you go. Let's focus on, let's okay. focus All on right. Charlottesville. Steve let's, true. let's keep Smith focused okay. here. Sorry. <laughs> um, yes, yes, QB. Yes, QB. <laughs> keep Smith focused. Let's. Was an inside joke. Not so inside. I think we talked about. Yeah, we this. talk about it all. The time. We talk it's about not it all. Inside it's not an inside joke anymore. But here's the reality of it: is right. We got. So if we're in a, if we're if yeah. we're in agreement that we probably have three at least three candidates running for three seats. 
In other words, we're not going to have, we're going to have an opposed election in 2023. Yeah. An opposed election. What's that, what do you talk, what, an opposed election? You, that means somebody's running against somebody that's currently in the seat. So all bets are off if the three folks that are running announce, but nobody's running against them. Again, this is why elections matter. 2023, three seats are up for grabs. Lloyd Stokes, seat of Miguel, Michael Payne. So if they announce, and they have to announce by, uh, help me out, Neil. The January of that year. No. Um, June, this year was June 7th. It's somewhere in June. Okay, you're right. They have to, they have totally to right. announce. So okay. whatever the, let's call it June 1 for the sake of a talk okay. show. Okay, Right? So June 1 of 2023. That's exactly right. Yeah. So less so, than two years from now. Not that far. Correct. I mean, not that far. We're talking 21 months. Correct. So if we don't have this all done, locked in, and voted on, by that point, it's going to get kicked. It's going to kick, get kicked. I think, I don't know. I, I just, how long has it been taking us to do the, the comp plan? Forever. I, I don't know. I, I hope to God I'm wrong. I'm, I'm hope to God that, that um, you know, regardless of what it looks like, it gets the next step goes very efficiently in time, but it's a public process. Guys like Bill, guys like Neil, guys like you and I, folks like uh, Nikki, Yona Smith, everybody will have a, a, an ability to participate in this. The, the zoning component is the real issue. Comp plan is just a freaking vision. Right, which is a beautiful thing. Everybody needs a vision. You need a vision and a business plan, right? You write a business plan, the first thing you start of, hey, what's my vision? But the zoning ordinance is, is the law. It's, it has the force of law. And that process, you know, is, could take that long. I, I think it will, actually. Neil Williamson, who on council, Charlottesville City Council, is pushing to have the zoning changes? Absent the urgency, Smith will be right about council kicking the can down the road. Yeah. So, Explain what he just meant there. Yeah, so he's right. And that's what I'm a little bit... I'm a, uh, there. Payne is pushing this. It, 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 Michael Payne is pushing this. Yeah. He, Habitat for Humanity, yeah. before he started on yeah. council. Yeah. Yeah. A guy who lives on a yeah. fixed income. I, I, I think the world of Michael Payne. I Would you not say he's I, very much I, in favor I'm, of this? I'm lucky to sit on a couple of commissions and boards with him. Yeah. Payne is pushing this. But there has... I think what Neil is trying to say, there... And, and I, I may be wrong, right? So this, this, there's some good things going on here. And, and I had lunch with Chip the other, Chip Boyles the other day. Same manager. And, Sharply and, dressed. Love so, Chip Boyles. I love Chip to death. Thanked him for all his hard work and gave him some kudos. Um, the, the, the council has seemed to somewhat coalesce together a little bit. But what Neil is trying to say, you know, it's better than what it was. Well, you know why they're coalescing? Okay. Do you know why? No, I, I, I mean, I, you obviously know why. But, you just don't want to say it. And you know your, your Robin's going to say it. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. But so. I, I know you know why. Yeah. Go ahead. They're coalescing because it's an election year. Okay. Have you noticed? Of course. Okay. Well. The, 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 and I'm, I'm choosing my words carefully. Sure. The individual on council that is often the one that is offering a little bit of friction is the mayor, yeah. that's safe to say, I'm not speaking out of turn, since she announced that she is running for re-election, it's been 100% radio silence on her Facebook page. It's 180. She's done a 180. It's a complete 180 yeah. since she's announced that she's running for re-election. So I've been doing this for 35 years. I have not, I've probably seen the same amount of lecturing, lecturing oh boy, I can speak English. Elections? Le election cycles okay. as election Neil. Election cycles. As Neil. Okay. Maybe not, but maybe close on that end of it. And to, and to, and to brand them all that it's an electric election, I can't speak English, election cycle that everybody's behaving because of it. I can tell you I know more cases where they're not, where, where the boards, it's not an uncommon thing. What's, 
what was happening in the city. All you got to do is look at the surrounding jurisdictions. Right now, they're all kind of playing well together, but that's not historically the case. You know, some, you know, I can tell you, I can speak firsthand in Fulvana County. For quite some time, there was many, uh, constant conflict between board members, very similar to what, what was happening at, at the city, city council. I, I know it in Louisa County. I know it. Green's always been kind of stable um, on that end of it, but some jurisdictions, they do that. Uh, if this uh, jurisdiction, the city of Charlottesville, five elected officials, all can, can get on the same page, they all got to be on the same page, they all got to be thinking the same way and acting the same way, then they can get this done. If not, you know, you, 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 you know this, this elections matter. These two new board members or city council members that come in, may have different opinions than the remaining four, or three, excuse me. That's this many, right? <laughs> the remaining three uh, on that end of it. I, I just been around the block a little too much. It, it, they gonna have to, this board and the one that's gonna get seated in 2021, 2022, this, this coming, the new council yeah. is, gonna, is- Two seats open this November. Walker, the incumbent is running again. Yeah. Hill, Heather yeah. Hill, is not running again. The short list is Yaz Washington, yeah. Nakia Walker, yeah. Juan Diego Wade, and Brian Pinkston, who are running for two seats. Our crystal ball, or if we were betting men, and occasionally we are, the I Love Seville odds makers have Juan Diego. That's Liza the door. She's <laughs> yeah. the bookie. She's the bookie. She's under there keeping <laughs> the We got bookie. Bruno upstairs. We got Bruno. With the chalkboard. He's in the green room right now. The I love Seville. I would take Liza's odds over Bruno. <laughs> Bruno, he'll crack your skull if you don't pay up. Bruno, the odds maker for I love Seville, has got Juan Wade, a two to one favorite. Yeah. Got Nakia Walker, a three to one favorite. Got Brian Pinkston, yeah. five and a half to six to one favorite. And Yaz Washington, the long shot at 20 to one. Yeah. So Neil's not going to like this comment um, because elections matter and. And um, he, you know, he likes to see contested uh, Everybody does. Uh, elections. But in Albemarle County, you actually have a chance of moving whatever agenda it is, whatever Ned's agenda in the board, uh, uh, Albemarle County's board of supervisors, you got a better chance of getting some of whatever that particular Oh, item. don't say it. Of, yeah. of having institutional memory and candidates who run unopposed. So from one election cycle I'm, to the I'm other, at it they can follow through on what they're trying to do. I'm looking at it purely from a practical perspective, right? So, so pivot back to the city. It's demoralizing that three spots are up for grabs on Almore County's Board of Supervisors. McKeel, Galloway, and Liz Palmer. It's, it's not, None of them are running against it's anybody. Not, it's not just Liz that. Palmer's not running for re-election. The good doctor's replacing her, but there's no challengers here. It's... it's not just Alamo County, Fulvana County is the same thing. It's not good. I, I don't disagree with you. That, yeah. For the sake of a talk show, I'm just giving, I a, I giving a counterpoint out there. Yeah. There's, somebody could look at that and say, okay, we've got some consistency here, right? And they may be able to move along. And I'm candidates trying. Candidates matter, Neil said. Candidates matter, they yeah. do. I, I, elections matter, candidates. I absolutely, absolutely do. I mean, my district, I live in Fulvana County. There's no, there's nobody, there's not, it's run on an opposed. Having one, um, having no opposition but we're gonna in help local that. government creates a monopoly of policy and thinking, and a monopoly of policy and thinking is no bueno for the municipality. A good example of a monopoly, Dominion Electric. Sure. We do not want the Dominion Electrics. You said that with such a smile on your face. Dude, I, I'm a free market guy. <laughs> yeah, so are you. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Competition is good for everyone. I get it. I don't understand why uh, in North Carolina, or if you have solar, you actually get money back. And in Virginia, you don't with the same company, Dominion. Go figure that one out. In North Carolina, you actually get a check. Your boy, uh, that's, I did not know that. Yeah, you actually get a check. Um, Andre Xavier has this to say. Hey, Andre. Um, he says, great conversation. Really appreciate the knowledge. He's, he's one, hard, one hard working dude. Oh, he's a smart guy. I thought I put a lot of things, and when you take a look at all the things he does, man. You're legit, Andre. We love you on this show here. Affordable housing in the city of Charlottesville is a utopia, Jerry and Keith. It Say that is, again now. Affordable housing in the city of Charlottesville is a mm. utopia. 
Andre Xavier says. So, so it that, is not going to happen. Mm -hmm. There is too much demand and money. Affordable housing will be available further and further from the city. That is our reality. You know what, Andre, I, I have a <clears throat> tendency to agree with you on that. So I'm going to give him an example not. Okay. Go ahead. Took 140000 the land trust, took $140,000 cash through my relationships that I set up between Stanley Martin, the Albemarle County, we produced and put, we're just closed, we're closing on uh, next week a couple more. We have put seven affordable housing buyers into Spring Hill, which is on the tip where it's 20 and, and Avon connect at the end, at the end of uh, that part of Albemarle County. We put in $2 million worth of product in the ground for $140,000. We put seven, I'm just telling you, yeah. look, it's seven. I'm, I'm, it's I, not I, 700. I'm giving you props. It's not 7 million. But the re thank you, thank you. It's my favorite thing. I'm going to hide that effing thing one day. Uh, <laughs> I respect your efforts. But my point, my point is, it got there because we brought everybody together at the table. Earlier when we were talking, that's what I was saying. You know, it, it's demoralizing. You put all this time and energy in it, and uh, you know. Affordable housing, and, and you are a champion I'm trying anyway. of affordable housing. I'm trying. Keith Smith is one of the true, authentic warriors for <laughs> affordable housing. And you know you are. Yeah. And he's being humble here, which is rare. Yeah. Okay? You know it is. You know he is. I'm a kind of a humble guy. This, this I, stuff I, I don't like. I was a like. I was a this stuff I don't like. I was a singer. Yeah, thanks. Um, I just want, I just want efforts, to help. The efforts are not keeping up with the free market. Oh, my God, no. No. The efforts are not keeping up with no. this Zoom town that Charlottesville's no. become, Amor County's become. No. The efforts are not keeping so up here's with the positive end of baby it. boomers flooding here. So here's the positive of it. Please. Right. So just to put a simple explanation to it, what we're doing is we're doing what we used to do when I was building. We're, we're, we're passing contracts over the, over the closing table, right? It, it's too complicated to explain on, on a talk show. But we've created something that is... Re, is um, expandable, is scalable. I just got a phone call yesterday to somebody who wants to sell a house in Belmont to the land trust. And we're negotiating a price that we're going to buy that at 50, God, God 60 to 70% under value because this person wants to do the right thing. And we're going to turn around and flip it this is a this is a flip flip it to an affordable housing buyer. We're going to retain the land, owner of the land for the cost of twenty thousand dollars to us. But the way this thing is structured, so it's 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 expandable. We can do it. But you're hundred percent right. It's just like, you know, it's like standing. Um, I watched a a video. You ever see this hundred foot wave thing on on. Um, I think it was uh, Amazon that did it. It's about a guy that surfs these 100-foot waves. Just goes around the whole world looking for these 100-foot waves. It's like that. You've got these 100-foot waves, and you're trying, to, you're trying to do something. And these 100-foot waves are just beating the heck out of you. But you get up, and you keep on doing it again. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you're, getting, you're catching some resistance here. I probably would. You're catching some resistance here. So is the show over yet? Look at um, that, 11.15. You'll appreciate <laughs> it, though. It's respectful resistance. Oh, yeah, sure, of course. Um, Andre says... I respect Keith Smith so, so much. Good man. And I love, love, love the land trust. But. But, <laughs> but affordable housing is not yeah. $200,000. Affordable housing is $130,000. Well, that's actually not true, but that's okay. Mustache Dan Pettit. Keith is doing a great job with Stanley Martin, but it is a Band-Aid yeah, well, for the total that. people who need affordable housing in this area. Yeah. Grayson. So Affordable housing is not a reality in Charlottesville. We are landlocked, we do not have enough homes, and as long as people want and love to live here, affordable housing is a pipe dream. Yeah. So, one of There's the- There's more. No, no, go ahead. Okay. Um, I feel like I'm in a rezoning. <laughs> <laughs> Finish your thought. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. I, mean, I, took, no I, took, I took notes, go ahead. Nicholas Erpy, free market. Free market, sure. free market, exactly what we need, the free market. Laura Crailing, if anyone thinks affordable housing starts with the two, they're not living in today's reality. So many of us make 
$15 an hour or less. Yeah. No one at that level of income can afford a home with the two. Oh, look at this. I'm getting phone calls, too. So I'm going to go to that, too. <laughs> I can keep going. Yeah, yeah. Show's yours, sir. Yeah, yeah. So um, let's talk about affordable, the term affordable. Okay. And I appreciate that. Um, one of the things that I'm trying to do and have been trying to do for three years and I'm coming off after this year on the Regional Housing Partnership is to define that. So what we just heard was the term affordable means different things to different people. Yeah. I have an affordability problem. I can't afford the house that I want. It's, that's an affordability problem. So, so the, the thing is, is how do you define that? And it means different things to different people. So the two in front of it is based on a 60 to 80% area medium income. The one that has a one in front of it. Yeah, the the no, devil's that. Okay, go let, ahead. Let, let yeah. me finish, please. Yeah, sure. So, so the, the one that has a one in front of it is in the 30 to 40 to 50% area medium income. There are programs out there. There are entities out there. I'm focusing on the land trust, which we're built between the 60 to 80%. I really prefer the term workforce housing than affordable housing for what the land trust is doing, right? Habitat, if you take the time to dig into it, Habitat's... Um, well, wheelhouse is in the 30 to 50 percent area in area income when you go below 30 percent then you are in subsidized housing which are pretty much all government run programs so i'm not you know the land trust has a very what what is this not a silver bullet silver buck shot silver buck shot you said that uh uh, uh Robert Liberty out in Portland State University. He's come on the show. He's come on the we show. We love that guy. We should get him back on here. Uh, we will. He's a dear. I'm trying to get him to fly over here. Uh, th but the real talk budget doesn't quite cut his <laughs> government. <laughs> but, the, yeah, so it, it's a great topic to talk about. It's just there is no one answer, right? What, what's, what's affordable to you and affordable to somebody else, it's, it has a whole different thing. And I hate the term affordable. We've, we've just gone to the point of using that, and it's a catch-all. I'm going to throw this to you here. I hope, area, I hope I did a decent job. You did that. a great job. The area median income is insane. thresholds and percentages are tremendously skewed by the obscene wealth in the area. So 60 to 80% of area median income is skewed yeah. because of the top-end wealth on that thermometer. Sure. 30 to 40% area median income is skewed because of the top-end wealth on that thermometer. Sure. I'm going to throw this to you. It's $93,000. Is what? Family of four? Household income? Uh, no, that's the median income per household. Yeah, that's what a I'm saying. As you... Family uh, income. Correct. Household income. They household do about, income. They do okay. about household income. And as you have more folks, that number drops down, and I'm trying to find it. Um, Derek Bond. Love you, Derek Bond. Love you, Derek Bond. Restaurateur and entrepreneur... Derek Bond, a fantastic operator, Derek Bond. He says, encourage businesses other than retail in this area to help solve this dilemma. I would agree with well that. Well said, Derek Bond. Um, so 80% one person household is 52,000? Okay. This is 80%. Yeah. No, so the, so as you go down, that number goes down. I don't I'm only have it at eighty percent. Two person is sixty, three person is sixty seven, four person is seventy four, five is eighty, and it works its way up um, up going up to this goes up to eight person, which is ninety eight thousand. I'm gonna pose for the sake of a talk show. Oh god. This is for the sake of a talk show. This does not necessarily mean this is how I feel. I have this a meeting. Is to you know stimulate that. discussion. No, you, you can go. You enjoy this. You know you're my clear you, 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 you know my calendar better than yeah, I do. And I can tell you're having fun. Yeah, I'm having fun. Yeah, yeah and you love this stuff. I, I do. I, I just and we've forgotten two minutes into the show that we're on cameras and never mind. Uh, I've forgotten. And it's and look, two I stopped shooting the shit. I stopped sweating. Yeah, yeah. you enjoy it. I, I, yeah. I truly enjoy it too. I just, I, I just want to be careful with my words. I, you should be. I, you got a lot of, yeah, I don't. And this lives forever on the internet. Well, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable in my Keith suit. Um, but I just don't want to, I hope my words don't come across uh, offending anybody on, on the end, end of this stuff. And when I mean the term affordable means, the term affordable housing means different things to different people, which is a struggle, right? That's a struggle that I've been trying to wrap my head around on trying to help, help discuss that. Somebody will listen to that and say, a one person at $52,000 is an insane amount of money. It's high. 
That's a lot of money, $52,000. Uh, but these things are run by and governed by what the HUD, Home Urban, what is it, um, Housing, oh God, I forgot what HUD stands for. Come on, I've, help me out, I lost, but anyway, the federal government, HUD, they set these criteria up. Um, so I'm gonna paint a picture for you for the sake of a talk show. Andre says affordable housing should be factored in to the uh, 12 to $15 per hour range, that that's the unskilled labor um, yeah, hey. sure. Got it. So I'm going to paint a picture for you. Um, this is only for the sake of a talk show. This is not what I necessarily, I do not believe this. I'm doing this to stimulate conversation. Let's say we allow the free market, the free market to play out. The free market's going to, the invisible hand of the free market is a tricky beast. She's not going to be stopped. Okay. So let's, we allow the free market to play out. Particularly in the state of Virginia because it's a property rights state. Exactly. It's a property rights state. And it's, uh, for the most part, an anti-union state. And it's also a, a Dillon Rule state. And it's too. a Dillon Rule state, anti-union state property. So you've got a lot of things that are putting tailwinds behind the free market. So here's the, here's the, here's the scenario that I'm going to paint. You allow the free market to play out. Charlottesville becomes the epicenter of the region it already is. Charlottesville becomes this bastion of wealthy individuals likely to be white. <clears throat> the affordable housing, as Andre Xavier, as Mustache Dan Pettit, as Bill McChenzie, if so many have, paint, have said on the feed so far, becomes in the outer county region. It's where it's going. It's where it's going. You're talking Waynesboro, talking Fluvanna, it's where you're it's talking going. Louisa, you're talking Orange, Gordonsville, outer county region. That outer county region gets momentum and gets the positive impact of thousands, if not ten thousands of people moving to those respective jurisdictions because that's what they can afford. Mm -hmm. Those jurisdictions then get tremendous tax base that comes from real estate, retail, dining, and people living out there. The Fluvannas, the Orange, the Louises, the Greens, the Madisons, the Waynesboros, they win in this setting. They get more people, they get more buyers, more sellers, more tax base. Charlottesville also wins because the people that live in the outer counties drive to Seaville where they find their employment, often working for those that can afford to live here. In that scenario, what is the fatal flaw? You know, there's probably a thousand of them. You know, there's, there's, there's all these road mines, ro uh, ro uh, landmines that you have to navigate through this. Look, I, I was, I'm gonna pivot a little bit and answer it a bit of a different way. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Going back to the conversation we had before, gentrification is going to happen. It's, unless something absolutely disastrous happens that impacts us, this region, negatively, UVA just disappears, right? Something drastic happens. This, this trajectory is just going up. It's been going up as long as I've been here since 1987. It is not coming down because of this article and that article and this, that, and the other thing. So gentrification is happening. Prices are increasing. You have to increase the product. I'm just a simple guy doing a simple thing. It's a simple supply and demand. You have to increase it to try to stabilize that a little bit. But I'm going to pivot a little bit on this stuff. The same client we were talking about moving out from Arizona, can't find what she wants. She's just looking for a two-bedroom apartment close to downtown Charlottesville. I can't find anything for her to rent that doesn't have a two in front of it. Thousand. Two thousand in front of it. Two-bedroom apartment. She has to be able to park a car. She wants to preferably, uh, you know, only walk up one set of stairs because of her health conditions and all that kind of stuff. I can't find that. Do you know how much house you can buy? I haven't had a chance to do the numbers. I was trying to do it when you were talking. But for $2,000, first of all, $2,000 a month is insane. It's insane. But, you know, a $300,000, or we're talking about this too, and, I, and if I were smart enough, I could rattle off some numbers, but I can't. But if you look at a $200,000 or $225,000 house at today's interest rates. The mortgage on that's like 1100 a month. It's about 1100 1200 yeah. Well, yeah. you got to figure your... Your, your taxes and insurance, that's what I was trying to do quickly. And whether or not there's an HOA. I'd say it's between 1100 and 1200 1100 and 1200 You can't rent anything for eleven to $1,200. No, but if you drive someplace else, now you have driving costs in front of it and all that stuff. So about this this 200 this two thing, uh, you know, interest rates are helping that out a little bit, you know, but it, this is just... So you never answered my, my scenario. 
Yeah. I, I, I mean, the I, first thing that we should say is in the scenario that, that I just painted, you'd have no diversity of people. I would agree with that. In the scenario I painted, you would have um, a hierarchy of, I mean, of, um, it would further the class hierarchy. It's happening anyway. Both of those things are going to happen anyway. So let's, in, let's, try a, let's try to impact that a little bit. So to go back to the free market comment, I'm a free market guy. I know you are. Big time. Um, he's a competitive guy. He's an entrepreneur. I'm a, I'm a free market guy. Serial I, I, I entrepreneur. Love, love the free market. Yeah. Really do. But don't you think government has something to do with it today? We just, we just had this conversation. Government has something to do. Well, I mean, you could make a legitimate argument that the Federal Reserve, no, 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 the interest I'm, rates where they are, I'm are causing this housing crisis. Yeah, I, yeah I'm not going to unpack that one right now. Okay. But the way I was going with this was the current, I'm kind of rolling ourselves back to this, this, um, this uh, missing middle rezoning comp plan thing, right? If the argument is let the market take care of itself, right, and, the, and keep government out of it, government's always going to be in it. Re it. It's in it, and it's in it by the tune of years, we talk about this all the time, red tape into, into green tape. So the, 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 if we rolled on to a lot in, in Belmont, God, assuming you can find one, you've got to follow rules and regulations. The government is involved in it. You have to do Well, here's the crazy thing. Erosion. You taught me this. Albemarle County, and our, I have a client he knows as well. That's a builder and a developer. If you build a home in Albemarle County, you taught me this. Mm-hmm. I listen. Listen to learn. If you build a home in Albemarle... You also Albemarle, read a lot, too. Yeah. A lot of stuff that you're setting. Neil, too. Um, if you build a home in Albemarle County that's $400,000... That's nationwide. 24% of that $400,000. Yeah. 24% of the $400,000 is tied to government, mumbo-jumbo, red tape, paperwork, policy, and bureaucracy. Not the lumber, not the stove, the granite... All those things. Not flexible. the roof. Yeah, yeah. It's paperwork and red tape. Yeah. 24% of a home. So roughly 100 grand. Round numbers. That right there is how yeah. the government can make things more affordable. Absolutely. <clears throat> That's where we do this red tape, green tape. But my point I'm trying to make, again, for the sake of a talk show to bounce things off back and forth on it, government's in it anyway. That's not what that $100,000 is. It's there. Yeah, it's that's not free market, right? No. That's that, that that's the government doing it. Now let's paint a different scenario. Some of this stuff is good. The Chef Chesapeake Bay Act is good. We own property down. We used to own property down on the Eastern Shore. We've been going down there since 1987. I can tell you, the water in the bay is a lot better now than it was in 1987. That's because of a lot of these rules and regulations. But it's just gotten to the point of the extreme, right? Where where uh, I'll give you an example. Um, I, I volunteered my time to help build a firehouse out in Fulvana County. Um, they reached out to me and said, look, we need some help. And so I volunteered my time to help them go through the rezoning process, the site plan process, and all that stuff. Just to go through the D, this is a little one-acre parcel of land, um, just to go through to build a parking lot and a new firehouse for Lake Monticello. So we can serve our citizens out there. Just the DEQ permit, the De Department of Environmental Quality permit, took me nine months to get. That's ridiculous. Nine months to get. And you know how I got it? I put on this suit, drove to Richmond, and sat in the guy's office until I got it. And I was going, hold it, time out. This is for life safety, right? And the bureaucracy is such that it took nine months to get a permit. Now, the mistake I made is anything that goes over an acre has to go to Richmond. I should have tweaked the plan a little bit. So it like went 0 .99. 0 .99, but we yeah. couldn't do it. We couldn't fit everything we needed on uh, under, under an acre. That's what has to change. And if you change that down to a few months or, or 30 days or 60 days, and to talk about the way the process works, right? They send you comments and you send it back and the stupid stuff, hey, this mathematical equation is wrong, this whatever is wrong, this, this typo is wrong. 
they get another 45 days review and it gets back to you and there's another change so they don't give you all your changes at once they just kind of eat you up in these small little changes over and over and over and over that's what needs to change and that was a conversation I had with Chip Boyles, by the way. Chip Boyles, city manager, Charlottesville, one of the sharpest dressed guys in the area. In fact, love I'm going to Love it when he wears I'm going to ta tag him. Tag him. I love it when he wears his... Um, Chip Boyles. I'm saying Chip Boyles. What should I say to him? We are giving you some props. Giving you some props right Get right a job. <laughs> you are... He wears his seersucker. Yeah. So Sharpest dressed dudes in central Virginia. I just put that in the field well, right there say for the city, city manager. Let's say city manager in the state in Virginia. <laughs> no, I want to say you, we're giving you some props yeah, right a, now, Chip Boyles. You're one of the sharpest dressed dudes in central a, Virginia. had a great lunch with them yesterday. Um, all right, so comments Name coming four. in. Go ahead. Um, a lot of them. And I've got a headache, so this is, this is going great. A lot of them. Um, Johnny Ornalis, mm -hmm. owner of Guadalajara and El Mariachi. Well, he went through this red tape experience. El Mariachi is amazing. If oh, you yeah. guys have not been to El Mariachi and Zion's Crossroads, you're missing one of the best and most delightful I sent, Mexican experiences that I've ever enjoyed. I sent the client out there on Go to El Mariachi. Sunday. They feedback they loved it. Get the queso appetizer, get a margarita, spend some time with Johnny and Steve. It's A+. Plus. Always there. John, Steve and Johnny are always there. They welcome you. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're Good family. fantastic operators. Good family. Johnny says, question. Why do rents go up if housing prices go up? Does something change in pricing with the current owner of apartment or home taxes or something else that impacts the rental pricing to go up as well? I'm curious. So that's supply and demand. Yona and I are about ready to buy um, an investment rental. We're intentional. We're, we're blessed enough to do it. We're intentionally keeping it at a, at a price point that, we've, that we can afford to do it. Um, and, and do that. But that's what's happening. It's market-driven, right? They're, they're, just like there's not enough houses, there's not enough rentals, right? There's not enough purchase, there's not enough rentals. And I'm not a rental expert by any stretch of the imagination, but that's what it is. It's supply and demand. The, uh, I think I might have the low, one of the lowest price rentals in Southside, Charlottesville, and Almaro County. Ours, ours will be a, b a little in bit the below. Mountain View. Are you in the Mountain View School District? No, 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 no. We're, 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 I don't, yeah. Mine's we're, 1510. Yeah. 1510 bucks a month. It yeah. goes up 4.75% yeah. every year. We'll and beat dude, you. we had we'll, a line out the door. Yeah, yeah, we'll be, <clears throat> we, we haven't released it yet because I'm painting it and doing a bunch of work to it. Uh, but um, we'll be below that number. Mountain View School District? No. Is it in Almaro County? Yes. We're Urban just, Ring. Urban Ring? That's yeah, all you want to say? Yeah, that's all I want to okay. say. Okay, fair. That's fair. We haven't closed on it yet, so. Um, Lonnie Murray. Mm -hmm. Lonnie Murray's come on the I Love Seville show. Yeah. Lonnie Murray, you're legit. Oh, yeah. Um, I think form-based code is one of the best ways of reducing that regulatory overhead without sacrificing good design, Keith. Yeah. <clears throat> so let's define, and, and Neil should jump in on this because he's an expert on this. Um, so... Uh, there's two terms that get kicked around a lot. Exclusionary zoning, because that's what we've been talking about, right? So there, there are uh, rules and regulations in zoning that are exclude things, right? That's what the term exclusionary zoning, uh, <clears throat> in my, from my interpretation of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Form-based code is a pretty complicated subject to talk about, but the essence of form-based code is that the jurisdiction and this is what we've been talking about, the jurisdiction creates these rules, right? So this is what, and I, I'm sorry that I bring up the West all the time, but the reality of it is housing issues always go from West to East. I don't know why it is, it happens on that end of it. So what they have done in these Western jurisdictions is they said, here is your list of items you must comply if you're going to build an affordable housing unit on this, this is what you get. And there's 30 boxes, 50 boxes, 500 boxes, whatever they are. And you have to check all these boxes. So that's, in essence, and, and Neil may disagree with me a little bit, I'm trying to simplify it a little bit, but that's what form-based code is, is that the jurisdiction has made a determination. If you meet all these items, it's automatic approval. It's an administrative approval. It is not, it's not a political. And, and that's part of the problem here. All these, things 
go through this political process, which is a good thing, right? Because Bill gets involved in it, right? I get involved in it. You get involved in it. But if you develop a form-based code, and I believe Albemarle County's tr tried that and just really couldn't get on, everybody get on the same page. Neil knows a little bit more about it than I do, but... Bill, Bill, Bill says this. When Glenmore was developed... I remember it. It was there. He built the first home in Glenmore. I literally built the first Bill, home. Bill, he built the first home in Glenmore. He says when Glenmore was developed, the homes were $250,000 and up. I remember it. Now look at them. Yep. Now the homes are trading with a number with an eight in front of it. Mm, maybe even more than that. Yeah. <clears throat> eight, eight up. But you got to remember, um, I told this story to somebody. When was that? Late 80s? Late 80s, early 90s. Frank Kessler? Yeah, Frank Kessler, yeah. Okay, so you're talking. I think talking. 92. I can't remember when it started, but I know I built... That Let's house. call it 90. 90. So 31 years, it's gone from 250K I, to call it high eights. And I will tell you, the house nines. I built in the 1990s had a five in front of it. But it was a custom. You know, a real big custom. You um, remember 250Ks in there? I don't remember 250. You know, I, I, I'm not going to doubt Bill okay. on that. He said he's been around here since 1963. Yeah, yeah. I, Bill would know then. I just don't remember twos in front of it. I remember you used to have to pay like 10 or 15 grand to join. That I remember mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on that on the joint because you had to join the, the thing. That's not part of the HOAs. It used to be. Oh, it used to be. You used to have where to, if you were going to live in the neighborhood, you had to join the you club. You had to join the club, right? Why? Wonder why that changed? Uh, probably because they didn't have enough people. Yeah, because they wanted to sell some homes <laughs> as opposed to, to sell, country club memberships. They wanted to sell some lots as well yeah. at the time is what they wanted to and sell. And they didn't want to bury your entry. They didn't want to. They wouldn't, didn't want to bury the, the entry. Home. Nick says. Um, in regards to the Nick. 20... Erpy. Erpy, hey. The Erpies are watching. Cool. Emergent financial service. I'll tell you, I had so much fun. So oh, much. I texted Alex afterwards, dude. Yeah. It was a blast. I was... Because we don't have anybody online for Friday. I almost was going to see if they're interested I'm, in a Alex, Nick, Michael... We had a lot of fun. Xavier, the fabulous Mrs. Mrs. Erpy. The boss. Emergent financial services. You want to grow your wealth. Yeah. Emergent financial services. Well, so let's talk about that because because this is kind of wrapping together a little bit. Yeah. Because the 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 essence of the conversation that I was trying to get into was that um, you know you can you don't have to walk in with a fifty thousand dollar check. You don't have to walk in with that. You can walk in literally with nothing, and these folks will help you build a plan to 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 to, to grow your retirement. And I know I've been there with them. Been there. Here's what he says. Excuse me. Um, I really enjoyed this show. I really enjoy spending time with you. Um, we made the comment about nationwide. If you take a $400,000 home, 24% of the cost of that $400,000 home are basically 100 k So we have to quote the source on that. It's tied to red tape or municipality policy and paperwork. The source? Is, is the Blue Ridge, excuse me, the National Home Builders Association. National Home Builders Association, very reputable source. He says, that's not even including the dead weight loss, the opportunity cost that pushes people away from building because of that 24% cost. It hits taxes and regulations. Under talked about is the dead weight cost loss yeah <clears throat> the dead weight loss and he says thank you for sourcing national association of builders so <clears throat> i'm wrapping around because it's just a, a recent conversation this client i had from arizona and i guess maybe i'm a little bit intimidated that she was a clinical psychologist um but you know she kept on saying to me because we were trying to f find something that meets her needs clo close to charlottesville um, single family detached, single level, a little bit of land, not a lot. I just, you just have to go out to find it. And she kept on saying, well, why ain't anybody building it? Why ain't anybody building it? What is the regulatory requirements? This 100 grand. Yeah, that's bananas. But here's the other reason. Even if I was in the game again, physically in the game again, I couldn't do it. The carry cost. Yeah, the debt service. He's calling debt service. The debt service, the carry costs, to sit on something for six years. Yeah. I mean, I'm helping a client do something in Zion's Cross, excuse me, in, 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 in uh, right next to Lake Monticello, and we're in year number six, and I, I don't even have a site plan approved yet on this stuff. Now, he's fortunate enough to be able to carry it because he doesn't have to carry it, right, because it was, it was a cash purchase. But the opportunity cost is lost. This thing has been sitting there. But more importantly... The opportunity cost, in a nutshell, is what this individual could have done with the money instead of just 
sitting on it well, that's paying that, debt service. Well, that's that latte factor yeah. calculation, exactly. right? Right. Where so what if this guy took the five hundred thousand, a million dollars, and invested it to the market? And as Alex and Xavier, as Nicholas of Emergent Financial Services have taught that, us, seven percent return, which is conservative. Yeah. You take that million, you get a seven percent return every year. Instead of taking that million to buy some dirt and having to deal with some municipality tell you when you can actualize and realize that dirt into an opportunity that makes you money. So it's not municipality. It's only across the board. It's from the federal government, state government. So government. So, so across government. the board. Yeah, so he's fortunate enough to do that. So, so the problem with that is, is um, let's, let's get a little personal. Let's paint me. Oh, I don't like when you do this. Well, it's the truth, though. So okay. I think it helps people understand, understand this, right? Um, you know, we had, we got caught. We lost an obscene amount of money on that stuff. Didn't lose what was important. He was the developer. It was, it was the development. It was important. But it took me six years to get the point of saying, yes, I'm going to do this. And I had to, I leveraged because I didn't have cash. Right? Uh, that $17 million worth of cash on me. I leveraged all that stuff. Well, what happened in the six years? The market changed. Yeah. I was already committed to the money. I already had the roads built. I already had product going in the ground. I was stuck. Right. That. So what's happening, the people that are in the game now are only people that have huge pockets. Yeah, big that, time players. That can say, okay, well, I'm just going to sit back and let's wait on it. The small to medium guy is just not in the market any longer. And that was my explanation to her because she goes, well, I, you know, why can't somebody just do a little five lot subdivision? Well, first of all, to do that, the brain damage is ridiculous. The cost is ridiculous. We'll bring in, we'll bring in Christopher Bremet to talk about his sham, shamrock. Christopher Bremet. Bremet, thank you. His yeah, Vermont Construction. Bre we love Christopher. His <laughs> shamrock project. I'll tag him. He's on, I helped him move, buy that project and move it forward and, and, and move him along. All along. He, now, COVID actually helped him, right? But he was, needed that to be finished for last August, students. He's not going to even make it this August because of regulatory problems at the city at the last minute on that end of it. And it's just his carrying costs is just moving him along and is eating him alive up to the point where, guess what he's doing? Raising rents. So there's a cost there to everybody across the board for that. Uh, Bill said he was a custom cabinetry business and was designing and installing them in Glenmore when the neighborhood launched. Oh, I've, we need to get together. We used to own a cabinet company, Bill, <clears throat> way back when. Yeah. Name of the company was Newhouse, Kitchens by Design. So I mean, he was in the custom cabinet yeah. business. Um, 11.45. Oh, really? I wish oh. we can continue. Uh, <laughs> um, I thoroughly enjoyed this. I really wish. Well, for, for a show that I walked in and said I had zero topics I mean, dude, for today. One of, these days, one of these days, we should just take the re real talk and just go straight into the Isle of Seville show. Oh, dude. Yeah. My brain can't handle that. Where you go real talk all the way to the end of the Isle of Seville show. <laughs> what, are you trying to kill me here? Just saying, there's more comments we're not getting to. Yeah, so what do you have on at uh, 1230? Alex Erpy. Oh, cool, Alex. Yeah. Alex Erpy. Well, um, I would love to do that, but you know, you, you, you know, look, the, the, I can't tell you how on, I'm literally getting chills right now about right about to say, how honored and, and it's just that to, to, to what you're reading off of that, I, I just, I don't believe people are actually listening to me. It's just, I'm just honored to, to sit here and have this conversation and do this. And I just, who the hell wants to hear from me? You're a right? smart guy, man. You've been through that. the, uh, yeah. I, been there and back. I, 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 tell, I told somebody the other day I bought a bunch of PhDs in my life. Uh, Dan Pettit, great show. Nice to see Jerry wearing a coat. <laughs> oh, he wore one yesterday, Dan. Give <laughs> my buddy Daniel Jerry. Daniel Pettit, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, well, he's down at the beach, I think. I'm going to say thank you, homie. Homie. Um, well, homie, H-O-M-I-E, not H-O-M-E-Y. That, that outfit actually suits you well. Thank you. The, I could not One of our favorite stores. I could not pull off a t-shirt jacket. I'd have to have yes, a you couple. could. Nah, I couldn't do that. You could pull Maybe it. when I was 30-something, I could, but you not could, at almost 60. Pull it off. Um, Keith Smith, guys, Keith Smith. Keith Smith and Jonas Smith. Did you guys see what he is about? The honor and the character and the integrity. This is where I'd have to do some talking, okay? Yeah. Okay. This guy I'll is... I'll check my emails. This guy is as good as it gets. Yeah. Thank and you. if you need some guidance, a North Star, a compass to navigate one of the most difficult decisions of your life, buying or selling your home, I cannot speak more highly <coughs> of Yes Realty Partners and Keith and Jonas Smith. So I mean, one of the... Just fantastic people. 
one of the first things that, and I actually learned this from Michael Guthrie. Um, I've always did a version of this, uh, but he, he actually helped me with this years ago, about eight or nine years ago. Uh, one of the first questions we'll ask you is, uh, do we have permission to be honest? Now, we're always honest, but what I mean by that is, do I have permission to tell you something you may not want to hear? And, uh, and it's interesting when you do that, everybody's eyes just light up, please, please, we, we, you know. So, you know, we, you, that's what people want. You, it's amazing how many people, uh, how many, it's amazing how many people crave that now. Yeah, that's what people want. I mean, it, it, it's funny. They really crave that. And I don't know if this That's is... how got, we run our business. I don't know if it's something to do with that they got their faces stuck in the phone. I don't know what it is, but the, you can see their eyes light up. Um, this, Andre Xavier, this kind of conversation brings true awareness to our housing issue. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to discuss it. Please know how much your work is appreciated, Keith. Don't ever stop your fight. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Well, I, I, up, I, I'm, a, I'm a jarhead. I don't know anything other but better than that. But I'm going to give a spit. For anybody who's watching this, go on, to, go on to his Facebook page, right, and, and click on the About tab and see what this dude is doing, man. Patch Brewing Company? Uh, I can't wait for Patch. When, when is that going to get open? Do you know? Um, I don't want to speak. Okay, got it. Got it. I don't want to speak. Yeah, got it, got it. Patch Brewing Company, guys, Gordonsville is going to be absolutely unfair. amazing. Um, Thanks, Real man. Talk. Thank you, man. Yes, Realty Partners. Real Talk Interstate Service Company, a home's best friend, Interstate Service Company. Guys, if you've been in business 50 plus years and you're family and locally owned, you're doing something right. So if you're watching, excuse me, if you're listening, do yourself a favor, get on the Facebook page, and on the bottom is, is all our sponsors, right? We, we, we don't shout out enough to, to them, but these are key folks in the housing process. Please reach out to them. You know, if they can help you in any way, just tap in. Everybody from Scott Morris to, uh, Clo uh, to uh, Charles Bill Tucker, Bill Tucker yeah. Charlesville Settlement, um, you know, all the way across, across the board. And Dairy Market, actually, we went there for, uh, for dinner, Yona and I, last night after I picked her up from the train, so... Props. Thanks, bro. Thanks, man. Yeah, I, I didn't expect to. Uh, it was fun. I was These are the best ones. I was swarming a little bit. I don't These know if you the, noticed. The best that. ones when yeah. you come in, you know, and you shoot from the hip. Well. And you and we see what folks want. Yep, I, that's what I was hoping to do today. Yeah. Thank you. It worked out. Enjoy um, your show today, man. Thank you. Um, for Keith, for Judah, my name is Jerry. This is Real Talk presented by Yes Realty Partners, an interstate service company. The Isle of Seville show is up in 45 minutes. Alex Erpe, CEO of Emergent Financial Services. Guys, thank you for joining us and watching and listening. Truly grateful. Thank Take you. care. So are you serious about that? What's that? Moving into...